Hello and welcome to The Wow Show, an hour full of stories from and for truck drivers on the road. We're going to have fun saying thank you for who you are and what you do as drivers. And we're going to talk to some people who know their stuff so that we can learn more. My name is David Binyacek. I'm your host. Let's get started. Good morning, Canada. This is David and the Wow Show. Today's show is all about veterans and the connection between our veterans in Canada and the trucking community in Canada, truckers and veterans. I think it's an important story to tell uh, at this time, uh, given two things. Number one, the events that are happening in our world uh, in Ukraine and Russia, and our prayers go out to all the humans that are affected uh, in that human tragedy that's currently playing out, and we hope for a speedy resolution. Uh, and then secondly, with recent events in Ottawa, there was a an incident that wanted to cast a bad light on the relationship between truckers uh, and veterans. And in my experience, over the 30-some years that I've been working with transport, whether it was at Shell or now with Wow Trucks and the Wow Show, I've seen the complete opposite. I mean, uh, most Canadians have a respect for the veterans that have fought for our freedom and laid down their lives uh, for our freedom that we have today, it is extra deep in my experience in the transport community. And so I wanted to share that story with you today. We have a panel, Mike Motorose now, you know him well. Uh, he was the owner operator of the year in 2008, I believe, with Truck News uh, and just a respected trucker across uh, Western Canada and across Canada, for that matter of fact, and in the States. Uh, Motor is not a veteran himself, but he is highly active in promoting all things veteran and respecting veteran and raising funds for veteran causes and just speaking into their lives. Uh, and as he rolls down the road in his Support Our Troops truck, there is a very visible representation of the passion for veterans that Motor has in his heart. So he's one of the panel members. Secondly is Brent McClellan, and he is out of central Alberta. Brent and Rose are a fabulous couple that I've known over the years. Brent uh, spent several years in the Navy, in the Canadian Navy on the West Coast. Uh, and then Gord Cooper, you know him as a smoking gun. Maybe you didn't know that he also has a veteran background in the Canadian Army. I wanted to hear their stories. Stories are important. I know that in my family, my dad was willing to share when asked about stories of, of wars and just what went on. Uh, and I appreciated that because with stories come a reminder that this is somewhere that if we don't have to, we don't want to go back to again. Stories keep things alive that need to be shared with future generations. So I appreciate these three gentlemen for taking the time to come on the show, talk about veterans. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we made a surprise phone call to John White, editor of Pro Trucker um, and Driver Choice Magazine. And we had some fun talking about potentially uh, getting together again for a reunion tour of the big rig weekends that he used to have, but this time maybe in Kamloops, British Columbia. So as you listen to that, and if you are in or you have some ideas, don't be afraid to email me at david at wildchucks.com. So here we go. My discussion with uh, Motor, with Brent, and with Gord about the tie between veterans and the trucking industry in Canada. So uh, good morning, Canada. It is David here with The Wow Show, and I've got uh, three great gentlemen with me, um, Michael, Todd, uh, Motor, Rosenau. Um, and uh, you know Motor as the first uh, truck and driver in the 2008 Wow Trucks calendar. And actually, you know him for a lot more than that. That would just be one of his highlights. He was the owner operator of the year uh, for Truck News. What year was that, Motor? I believe that was 08, 09. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, 08 and 09. Uh, so thanks for being here. We've got uh, Gord Cooper, uh, famously known for the smoking gun. 
And uh, Gord, I, I've ridden in the smoking gun once, and I think I cost you the race because I'm six foot two, and I think my knee was dangerously close close to your shifter, and it caused you to hesitate for a couple seconds. <laughs> but I still remember being on that street in uh, in uh, Notre Dame du Nord, and uh, and it was just such an awesome experience. How's uh, how's Mr. Smoking Gun this morning? Oh, I'm okay, uh, and, and your your knee did not cost us that race. We stayed upright on a crazy. <laughs> it got pretty close there in that one. Well, we we kind of kind of had an exciting, uh, you know, three three corner type of experience there. But uh, yeah, it was it was definitely a, a fun time. Always as fun to get together with that wow trucks guy. Yeah, no, and likewise, likewise, likewise. And then we have Brent McClellan. Had a yeah, uh, Brent, uh, you've been part of the Wild Trucks calendar. You and Rose are um, a great team out of Central Alberta. And uh, and I appreciate you as I've gotten to know you through the many years at the shows. Uh, and so um, it's awesome having all of you. This is a gathering of friends uh, and it's really good. How's Brent this morning? Brent is doing outstanding today. Good. As they would say. Yeah. Well, you're looking well. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> you look even better, Mike. Well, thank the you. First, first picture that I saw of you on Facebook, Rose read what was there, and uh, it kind of struck a heart. Yeah, no, I appreciate all the support from everybody, and you guys have pulled me through. It's it's a, it's for sure. That's I know there's been response. a few times where you made comments on Facebook. I've asked you how you were doing, but anyway, yeah. it's as long fun. as you're doing good, buddy, that's all we care about. Well, I got Gordon Wendy looking after me, so I can't do anything but good because they won't let me get into trouble. <laughs> well, and they've got Whiskey, the enforcer dog. So uh, that's, that's right. Uh, that dog will all, how, how tall is Whiskey? Like uh, 10 inches or 12 inches or, uh, Gord, what's, what's Whiskey size? It's not the height of Whiskey, it's the weight of Whiskey. I think uh, she, <laughs> she's not getting a whole lot of exercise, uh, you know, running around. In, the snow's too deep for her to get out there and get much exercise, but she, yeah. she's, doing, she's doing just great. That's awesome. Cool. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, today's, uh, today's message, I think, is an important one. And it's one that I've, I've seen over the years being strong at a number of the shows. And as I've gotten to know you, um, Canadians, in my experience, are not as vocal in most things. We don't wave the flag as much as, uh, as Americans do. Uh, and when it comes to veterans, um, the spirit is strong and the connection is strong. And uh, in the States, they're probably more uh, outward with it in terms of, you know, a ton more trucks being deckled uh, with, with veteran insignia and, and just celebrating that tie. But it doesn't mean that that connection isn't strong in Canada and motor. Um, you're one example of that. And, and I just want to highlight today, just especially given the events that have happened lately, sending a contrary message. I think it's important to talk about uh, just the strong ties between people in the trucking industry in Canada um, and our veterans uh, in uh, in Canada as well. And, and um, you know, Gord and uh, Brent, you are both veterans. And so uh, maybe start with Brent. Can you talk about your experience and, uh, and you know, how you're involved in uh, the Canadian Navy and and uh, just your, your veteran experience? Uh, I joined the Navy in 1982 and 24 years later, I retired. And as I was getting close throughout my life, I always saw trucking as another job that was out there. I got a chance to ride with my uncle Eric, which was somebody I looked up to. Uh, Motor might know the company. He drove for Ken Brent, I don't know for how many years, but it was yeah. it was a number of years. And, yeah, they were out uh, of Northeast Calgary here. Yeah, he yeah. ran from Calgary. Uh, I think there's that place in Vancouver. There's a blue boy. There's a picture, a great big statue of a blue guy standing outside in Vancouver where Fletcher's was. Yeah. 
And that's where he unloaded. And then, of course, we loaded back out by Chilliwack called York Farms. And that went to, I think it was called, uh, like, that warehouse in Calgary, Loblaws Distributing. But he took frozen and, and refrigerated to that warehouse in Edmonton, then reloaded, come back maybe a little bit to Black Falls and then reloaded in Fletcher's here and right here and then did that rounder. I don't know how many times a week, but anyway, uh, then uh, I retired out of the Navy. I worked in the logging a little bit. And while I worked on logging, I got my, my air brake ticket and my class one. I did a little bit of trucking on the island. Uh, had one bad accident. And found out after the accident, it wasn't mess. It was not my fault. It was the heavy duty mechanic that didn't complete a safety, I guess, properly. And my uncle Ivan passed away. We were out here and we were looking around and I started trucking here in Red Deer with Arlie's Rocky Transport. And then uh, while I was working with them, I'd heard that they were on the auction block or up for sale. B&R Echoes bought them out. And when I started with that, I moved over to uh, Houston Trucking. They went bankrupt and now I'm back. I kind of swore off trucking because I lost a lot of money, never got any paycheck and fought with the government to get that. So one day Rose phoned me at home and said, you need to get over to Rose and all because they're looking for somebody to run around town. So I applied there and I've been working there for the last three years. All right. I'm thankful for a steady job. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't know that, Brent. You didn't know that? No. Well, I haven't been there for a while either. So I don't I don't get the the what's going on anymore type thing. So but I'm um, glad you're I, there. I'm sure you know that they've been bought out, right? Oh yeah, yeah they were bought out in December, yeah. 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 But, nice, nice healthy price. Yes, I forget how much money, but it was a lot. Yeah, three hundred and sixty mil. Yeah, by U, uh, UK uh, Royal Mail out of the UK. GLS. Oh, they're they're a, a sister company, but it was Royal Mail that was the the uh, I don't even know what you call it. It was brokered through them, I guess, yeah. or whatever. Royal Mail just doesn't sound like a trucking company per se, but uh, well, I guess it's, it's Royal Mail out of the UK, so it's yes. not small. It's not small. No, so no. they're branching out. Um, yeah. But as as a, I want to I want to go back here to both being a veteran. Um, and you're right, David. There, when you look at the trucking industry between Canada and U.S. And I'm not trying to knock Canada, but there are a lot of trucks. You seem to see a lot of pictures of U.S. trucks decorated with a, an American flag or soldiers or something on it. Um, I don't have pictures of it anymore, but there was a, a truck up in uh, Grand Prairie that had uh, the three sisters. I forget the name that did the song, The Boys and Company C. They were on the painted on the side of a truck, and to me that paid tribute to all those vets. The only truck I've ever ever seen in Canada that paid vet uh, respect towards the veterans across our country is Motors. Uh, when I first started going to the truck shows, I wanted to spend a little more time with Motor and never ever got the chance to, but. Motor has done so much work for all the veterans across Canada. He's put a lot of heart and soul into that truck and the things that he's done for, I forget what they call it, where they ride their motorbikes across Canada. Motors, yeah, those guys. Yeah. And yes, Rose and I try and help out. And at the very last truck show we were at, and hopefully uh, Motor remembers, a guy named Scott Casey. He came back and he was in Edmonton and 
he lost 60 members of his uh, platoon or whatever from coming back from the Persian Gulf. And Rose and Ali and some other guys kind of put their money where their mouth shouldn't have been. And of course, it got way out of control because they were selling neat strips to ch pull off guys at $2 a strip. Well, I think I forget how much money they raised for Scott. Uh, we ended up being there was over $500 raised. So you can imagine how much hair came off of chest and legs over two guys <laughs> at $2 a strip of neat strips. Uh, I think you were there that night, weren't you, David? Uh, no, I wasn't there that night. Uh, uh, I heard about the story, but I, I wasn't there that night. But anyway, they raised well over $500 for Scott's thing that he had going that. And that was one of the last truck shows that we were ever at. And That's every awesome. year we miss it. But, you know, there's... There was always that bond. And I wished it would go back the way it was where truckers talked on the CV. Like you hear about the accidents and stuff, but nobody talks on the CV anymore. Yeah. I don't know what the rest of you think, but. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to bring up, um, you talked about motor. Here's uh, a picture of motor out uh, with the support our troops rig. Uh, in BC, we had the chance after a BC big rig to head over to the army barracks. And did you have connections there, Motor, or how did we swing that? No, wasn't that Hank? Uh, uh, not Hank. Uh, the other photographer that was yeah. there, I thought he set that up for us. He had connections with the barracks, and so we were able to go on, and and uh, and that was uh, that was pretty special to be able to be there and in and amongst and with your truck, and they appreciated your rig and. And uh, so it was one of those memories, which is good. Was that Hank Motor? The good. The I I don't. No, it wasn't Hank. It was a it tall, wasn't Hank. skinny I can't gentleman. Remember his first name. He was Snow Photography, though. Yeah, Snow Photography. That's actually that rings the bell. So you're right, Motor. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. That was it. I, I was I said Hank because of course Hank Snow, right? Yes. Yeah. That was the first thing that popped into my head, and I. He's got to forgive me. I don't remember his first name now, and that's kind of embarrassing, but he's a great guy. Okay, we're all getting older. We're allowed. I know, right? Now, Mr. Gord, Mr. Smoking Gun, you've got some veteran experience as well. Talk about uh, your stint with the Canadian Army. Well, David, we're the senior crowd now, or at least I'm, I'm feeling more senior uh, all the time, but at least I'm, a I'm above thought. That's I'm a senior thing, right? at Shoppers Drug Mart, so I get 10% off on every Thursday. And, uh, and oh. so I, but their, their thing is 55, so I qualify for that. <laughs> well, I, I've got, uh, I'm into my second decade past 55, so, or at least getting close to that. So, what, yep. what can you do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, go. I joined the military a uh, heck of a lot longer uh, or a long time ago, let's put it that way, back in 73, and I left in uh, 1980. So I had a better part of You're kind of really echoing there, Gord. Yeah. Um, I think it's because motor. Let me go into another. Sorry. Yeah, if you can change your position, you might lose your echo. Is that any better? That's a lot better. That's way better. I, uh, I guess. Well, the down. first part, it was just what you said. You started way back or longer, and that's when the echo started. So if you can start from there, that'd be great. Okay. Well, we'll try again here. This might be a little bit better, is it? It's awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Anyway, I joined uh, 1973 after uh, three years of college engineering college in montreal and just wanted to go see the world so managed to uh 
get into uh, the military engineering branch and spent uh, better part of seven years, including Calgary, uh, posting for three years in Calgary at Curry Barracks. Mm-hmm. You'd mentioned that minutes ago. And uh, was down at, uh, I, I basically stayed in Canada only. I didn't get to serve overseas. So it was more of a very much a peace time. My ser- service for me. I was fortunate that uh, that it worked out that way. I guess for me, and uh, you know, just kind of in a support role, ma- mainly uh, learning uh, how to grow up in the, in the military. I was young. I'm in my early twenties. Yeah. Uh, ah, it was it was a great base to grow on. I just decided uh, after. Uh, my first child was born, Melissa. She was born in January of 1980. And I decided that uh, I wanted to come back to Calgary from Nova Scotia, where I was, and raise my family uh, in the Calgary area. So I resigned in 1980 and came back west, had a couple jobs lined up with uh, the civil service. Yep. And they fell through on. Uh, on a situation of hiring freeze for whatever reason. And I got on with Canadian Freightways. I don't know what drew me to the trucking industry, just uh, the idea of being outside for uh, most of my day and uh, starting to see the world. I got my family resettled in Calgary and within, I'm gonna say within 10 months, I was looking at the hotshot industry with uh, with light trucks. I got into a couple of gooseneck uh, outfits and uh, you know one ton and trailer and uh, kind of built things up from there so 40 years later. Your experience in the army and then civil service set you up for what you do today because you specialize in the uh, the high risk Um, you know, loads that uh, require engineering to make sure that they're going to safely get from A to B. And, and, uh, and so uh, that's kind of cool. I I like what you said, you know, I I don't know why I went, could it be and and I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, give you the answer. Um, But Brent, you kind of mentioned the word brotherhood. You know, obviously, that is so strong in the military, because of the environment when you're, you know, you're, you know, whether it's in training or whether it's, you know, uh, in service in Canada or abroad, um, just your mission. I think that environment just knits you like it does firefighters, like it does policemen. Um, when you're in a stressful situation, high stress, it bonds people together. Uh, and, you know, trucking, you know, I, I would dare to suggest, tell me if I'm wrong, isn't as high stress as the army. It has its stresses, but there's this brotherhood that is so common between the two. And so, do you think that might have been part of it? I, I think it definitely could be, David, because the job that I did within the Navy, it relied on everybody knowing their job and doing it at a specific time or working together. Because if you didn't, people got hurt, and killed, or could die very easily because I could send you some pictures, but like transferring fuel at sea. Mm-hmm. We shot a line over, we used a very small line, it was called gun line. And I stepped up all the way to one inch line to bring over a four inch extra flexible steel wire rope. And we used winches to get that across. But once it was hooked up to the ship or bringing that across, if any of those lines and that broke and people didn't work together to do that, yep. people could get hit killed like if you ever watched what they uh lines and wire cables when they break what they do to people yeah the end the end result is never good yeah. but if you look at the trucking industry and that's what i think kind of has gone trucking has gone away from is when you ran into trouble out on the highway you used your cb or you opened your hood somebody would stop within a very short period of time let's say as an example you're going down the road and you see motors truck you didn't know it was him he's sitting on the side of the highway with a hood open nobody passed him and if they did they always came back if they could 
or shouted out to somebody going the other way that there was a truck sitting on the side of the road, somebody would stop and help you within, I would say, under 10 minutes of you being stopped on the highway. Nice. But nowadays, every, I bet you 250 trucks will go by you before anybody would ever think about stopping. Uh, why that is, I don't know. The TMA, the, the AMA, the Truckery Motor Association. And I'm sure it still happens, um, but you know, whether we see it as much, uh, what are your thoughts, Gordon and uh, Motor? Uh, is that uh, the TMA, is that a lost art or does that still happen today? It still happens from my point of view in certain areas. Like uh, I've noticed, I've stopped, I don't know how many times I, I try to uh, assess the situation so that if I've got you know, an empty trailer or I don't have an oversized load, of course, uh, I'm not going to stop it and block traffic. But that that's another thing uh, that I consider uh, stopping to help. I don't want to be blocking the road for, you know, creating another hazard. Yep. But uh, quite often, uh, one thing about the CB radios is uh, they've been upgraded into VHF radios and, of course, uh, cell phones. So uh, CBs seem to have just faded out. Uh, uh, unfortunately, in some some ways, but uh, uh, they're just not as strong because with a CB they have uh, a range of maybe ten miles. With a VHF, I'm going to say up to fifty miles. Okay. And you know, to, to visit with somebody, we we plug in uh, to a VHF channel, and we can get a longer visit. You know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the thing and is with the, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Motor. Well, and like with Gord saying or whatever, like the cell phones, a lot of people now, uh, they, they have cell phones and they've already made their calls and stuff. And I think that's why a lot of people don't stop, I guess. But I mean, you look at the younger generation coming up, like the, you know, Tyler Rogers and, and, uh, mm -hmm. Joe Hans or uh, you know all the guys the, the younger generation that are coming up they're good people too you know and then you got uh, ambassador like Todd Hoytis and you know yeah. those, those guys are they're, they're doing big things in the industry and I mean Todd's quick to help out anybody you know like all these guys that I see but it, it's not as much because of the communications now the cell phones everybody's got a cell phone so yeah, I think a lot of guys just figure, oh, he's probably got a cell phone. Somebody's probably on the way, and they keep rolling. Mm -hmm. uh, I have both CB and the VHF radio, and like Lord said, the range on the VHF radio. I mean, that VHF radio in BC is a godsend. And running the mountains yeah. with the VHF radio, not a lot of guys run CBs. Yeah, if you don't have a VHF, you're not going to hear anybody in BC because nobody talks on a CB because of the mountain ranges and stuff. Uh, that VHF radio has saved me uh, when I started running the Rosenau Okanagan run for the short period they had it running out there. Yeah. Uh, that that radio saved me four days yeah. because I could hear what was going on up the road and plan a detour or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. it's, like I said, a, a lot of the people now, a lot of it too, the people don't stop because like Lord said, the safety thing or just plain don't care they just want to get to where they're going and they they don't want to stop but i think the safety issue too is a big thing like gord said you don't want to get in traffic and especially you know when it's heavy and people don't move over you know they don't move over in the lane and you get out of your truck to go see what's going on and some guy clips you as they go by because they're you know they don't know how to use their they're out of blinker fluid they don't know how to use their signal light to get over that one lane yeah you know so yeah 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 uh and so you know environments have changed and so when you talked about todd and you talked about uh Thai jam they both have large facebook communities yeah and so in my experience you know a lot of times facebook is the cb and uh and a guy goes into you know all, you know um what is it all out big rigs no limits which is ty's group or alberta large cars which is um todd. todd's group and yeah. uh they post something and and uh, I don't see as many roadside requests, 
but you know I see guys talking about other sort of issues they have and sometimes it's a roadside request going I'm here does anybody know anybody in the area and uh and you know kind of like you talked about Brent in the old days you know it's it's a matter of 10 minutes and you'll see people responding saying you know talk to Rick here's his number uh, he'll help you out and bringing that community together um motor like we, we put up the uh uh uh, the veteran truck uh, that you built. Talk about your heart to do it. So, I, if remind me if I'm wrong, but you you you're not a veteran per se, but you've got a huge well, you've got a huge heart for people, but you've got a huge heart for veterans. And and I would say that you know I mean obviously it's it's huge trucking in general. As I've known people in the industry, you know you know Canadians in general honor our veterans, but it's even heightened when you talk to people in the trucking community and then you've taken it to the to the ceiling with what you've done where did that hurt come from what where where did the drive come to build the truck um talk about that process how it got done who was involved who supported you um just give us a give us a, a view into that let me just sneak back to what uh, brent said about the i just off to or off this topic for a sec but yep uh, Brent was saying about guys that would drive by and turn around and come back or whatever. And it's funny that when I did the rolling barrage there back in 2019, I blew a tire on my fifth wheel. I was on my way to Halifax there. And as you know, from following my trip there on Facebook or whatever, I had quite a trip getting to Halifax. The trip back was great, but getting there was definitely a, a trip. But uh, I had pulled over. I had pulled the jack out and I wasn't there five minutes and a guy had drove by, seen me pulled over. He had spun around and come back in his peak and he had pulled over to give me a hand to change the tire. So that was, uh, that was kind of cool. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. there very long. So, and that was, uh, I don't know, probably a couple hours out of Halifax. That was probably one of the last things that happened on my trip there. And what year was that? Over in, that was 2019 2019 so a couple of years yeah. back yeah i pulled into the parking lot at the hotel there and scott comes over and he says come on get out of the truck come over here and i'm like you know what i'm ready to throw the keys at somebody and get a plane and go home <laughs> <laughs> and scott says don't come over here so i went over with scott casey and Stu and all the guys that were mark doherty and all the guys were sitting over a at the back side of the hotel drinking beers. I think I had three or four beers just to calm me down. Yeah. But sorry, so back to the uh the troop truck and everything. I can't take credit for this. Like I uh said in our previous meeting there, like uh my uncle Carl was actually the one that started the support our troops campaign. And he was bugging the government for it when I talked to him, he said he talked he was bouncing back and forth with emails and phone calls to the government asking him what he could do that didn't uh, cross any boundaries or whatever to to put in some sort of a, a support campaign for our troops yeah. and he wasn't getting anywhere he was just spinning the wheels he said so he finally just called the deco guy at rosenau there wayne and said find me a deco that we can put on a 53 foot trailer that's not going to distort and just go with it and i'll deal with the repercussions later so wayne found a couple pictures in the uh in a magazine or a government book or whatever and that's what ended up on the side of that troop trader that rosenau had yeah and at that time i had bought that uh blue and white freight liner off of my cousin jay because i wanted to park my day cab for the winter because the the I just didn't want to beat it up because that was my first truck, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I was in talking to my uncle Tim. I said I wanted to be a part of the uh, the support our troops campaign, and I asked if they would be upset if I went in and got my truck deckled to match. And my uncle Tim said, "Well, he says uh, I think that's a great idea. He says you take it in, and we'll take care of it." So they. They actually, Rosenau did the initial deckel job to match the trader. I've changed a few things since then. Like there was a couple things I didn't like, but I, uh, the back of the bunk and the passenger side door, 
like the wrap on the bunk in the passenger side door matches the troop trailer that Rosenau had started. Yeah. Uh, the driver's side door was actually three guys in Afghanistan. Uh, the one in the middle on the driver's side door is for, uh, uh, Frank Lindigger, who I grew up with in Leduc. We grew up as good friends, right? Yeah. And just changed little things over that. But uh, the, the whole, I just wanted to get involved because we had family and friends that were in the military. And I, I just felt I wanted to be a big part. I wanted to be a part of that. Yes. And so I got involved. And of course, I jumped in head first, just, you know, head down, ass up. And that's the motorway. I haven't, I, I haven't looked back because I mean, it just, it's something that's close to my heart, you know, like all my family and friends that have served, I wanted to make sure that they knew that it was something that I wanted to be a part of and support. Yeah. Um, Brent and Gord, I'll, I'll ask you this, uh, you know, in Canada, how well do we, I mean, everyone, you know, through their verbiage and it's sincere, honors our veterans, how well do we do as a country actually uh, supporting them? Go ahead, Brent. Uh, I wish when it came down to Remembrance Day, it was it be, would become a staff holiday. I agree with some of the kids that you hear on the news that they wish they could uh, have veterans come to the come to the school and talk about what they've been through and uh, where they've been. Because when my son was young, we used to take him to the Legion all the time. And he always asked me things. And there was a couple that visited the Legion here in Red Deer. And I said, Eric, that's who you need to go talk to. And ask them those questions. Mm -hmm. Because she was wax and she flew aircraft out of the factory to not to the front lines, but the next closest thing. And he was an actual uh, test pilot. But there again, that's how I would think people would, because the vets from World War One are almost all gone. Yeah. World War Two vets are slowly numbers are dwindling. Then you got all the Afghanistan people. The numbers there are staggering, but I think what Todd Motor does is. Second and none, and he deserves a lot of praise for what him and his and Rosenau have done for the vets across Canada. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Gord, what do you think? Well, uh, you know, my background uh, with my father being in uh, World War II as, uh, you know, in the liberation of Holland and my older brother, Jim, was uh, in the military police. Uh, and then uh, remustered to vehicle tech. He he put in uh, you know, 13 or 14 years, and you know, kind of. I was inspired by them uh, to join up and and see, you know, how how I could fit in. I I found that it was <laughs> there was an awful lot to it. Of course, uh, I, I looked at joining the airborne uh, regiment uh, you know young crazy guy uh, opportunity at least for a young and crazy guy to go jump out of airplanes and do all kinds of stuff and then I had a vehicle accident uh, oh while I was on a, a course down east I had somebody wipe me out from behind when I was riding my dirt bike and I you know long story short uh, kind of pointed my career in a different direction. I wasn't a hundred percent after that, as far as uh, being able to continue on a career progression, but uh, uh, it, it was time for me to get out. I've always had uh, had the interest in, in paying it forward. The military, uh, I think, shaped my uh, career in, in, in what I'm doing with specialized hauling and some of the fun stuff that I get into hauling aircraft. You took pictures of that years ago, Dave, that was, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> aircraft don't belong on the ground being, uh, loaded onto a truck, but, uh, I sure had a heck of a good time moving a bunch of them and, 
now in the summertime, I'm involved in hauling uh, refueling trucks for aircraft out to the Alberta and BC wildfires. So I actually was in the seat of a 17,000 liter uh, jet A1 tanker uh, hauling it up to the to the helicopters. So I, there's there's still an opportunity for a bit of excitement, uh, getting in closer to the fires and what a fellow really needs to with a with a bomb on the back. But it's it's still uh, you know I I have nothing but respect for what Motors done and what he continues to do, and uh, it it does bring what what Motors been doing is bringing more awareness to the Canadian public and allowing uh, you know the the brotherhood of retired uh, military as well as serving members yeah. uh, first response uh, to say hey you know that's uh, that's a great thing that Mike's doing motor and uh, that's that's what our forces are doing uh, as peacekeepers uh, first and uh, you know supporting uh, the cause basically all the way around for first responders and uh, our peacekeepers abroad. So.
nice to have the awareness out there. Uh, I try to, you know, even on my uh, on my race transporter. Okay, I've, you know, supported the yield program with the RCMP and and uh, have always had support our troops on on my race truck as well as on my uh, uh, race transporter. Uh, the racing is just the fun fun part to. Uh, participate in uh, uh, the trucking well that's that's what pays most of the bills so what can I say right yeah no definitely definitely no well, thank you thank you for that um, I, when you said it Brent I was just looking up while um, while you both were speaking I was listening to both of you but um, World War One yeah we do not have any veterans left from World War One the last veteran his name was uh, John Babcock he died at 109 years old in 2009. And so he was the last Canadian vet uh, that was there. Um, but I also wanted to show you uh, from, there's World War II in Afghanistan. And, and, uh, and uh, here is a truck out east. Let me go to, actually, I'm gonna share. You're gonna see a screen. This is um, Mr. Babcock. Uh, picture when he was young. He was the last surviving Canadian vet. Uh, and then out east, we have, um, uh boots as his name yeah corporal boots yeah yeah Bucci, Bucci, i think was his last name wasn't Boutillier, it? yeah and uh yeah. so jack and and his parents are are great people um out of north bay ontario uh and uh they deckled the truck in honor of him unfortunately it was uh the truck was in a bad accident and so the truck was totaled but i think it's been rebuilt and uh, and so uh, that continues to pay tribute, but uh, they've done an awesome job at paying tribute to his memory um, on this. And there are track. there are more trucks out there, David. Like uh, yeah. Big Freight, Big Freight has a truck deckled. Uh, I believe Bison has a trailer deckled, and they have a truck that has been deckled with some sort of um, a military uh, tribute. Um, there's another one, uh, I think it's uh, Renegade Transport up north somewhere, I think. They've got yep. a, a trailer that's done up, I think, not only for our military, but our first responders. Yes. And stuff like that. So there, there is support out there. And I mean, we don't have the numbers that the U.S. does. Yeah. So, I mean, they're going to have a lot more patriotic, Definitely. patriotic uh, stuff going on out there because, of course, their numbers just drowned us as far as population goes yeah uh you know and then we got ed tucker who's got that dodge four by four that's all all uh done up and then gerald kosh with the uh chrysler 300 so i mean we have even the private sector too the people that are you know doing their own personal stuff with the their personal vehicles and stuff so yes. i mean there is support but our numbers aren't up there like the u.s for sure yeah, and and just to be clear, yeah, I, I I think the support is as strong in Canada as as it is in the U.S. Um, and the question was, much like our flag, we're not as likely to we don't we don't wave it as much as our southern brothers do, um, you know, sometimes maybe. But you're right, there are a number of trucks across the country, Boots being one of them, and then there's the Red Army truck. Uh, and I'm trying to remember who owned that. It was at the Fergus show uh, many, uh, many years. Maybe you saw it. Did you see it when you were down there for the presentation motor? It was a I red, don't remember uh, seeing that one. It actually kind of, uh, Gord, it kind of looks like, um, it looks like your cab over. Um, and I believe it was a cab over. And, uh, and uh, the trailer um, had the similar sort of red sort of scheme. But again, it was, it was an army scene. It was a war scene and just paying tribute to our veterans, which is, uh, which is awesome. Uh, and they're cool stories to, reto to be retold. I, I like what you said, Brent. Um, you know, my dad uh, fought in World War II and just his stories. They, you know, we need to keep, you know, kids need to hear them. Uh, kids in our school need to hear them uh, because that's what, that's what keeps those lessons alive. And as we move farther and farther away from, you know, uh, veterans that are are, are part of the world wars, the danger is those stories get lost and, and, uh, and people aren't reminded of the consequences of that. And I mean, that's, that's ever too present now in, in the situation that's unfolding in Ukraine and, and Russia and, and everything that's involved there. Um, you know, what an incredible story of people standing up for their country and uh, citizens, you know, rallying to fight and, and, uh, and just fight for their independence. And so our thoughts and prayers are with them. And, 
do you know what this was the this was i you know get your comments on it you know my dad you know he he never hated his enemies because he realized he said you know as he as he would meet them um you know if times were different he said we could be friends yeah and and so yeah. I, I, I even, you know, when we say our prayers, obviously we pray for the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian uh, government, but I also pray for the Russian soldiers because many of them are 18 year old kids that didn't sign up for this. <laughs> and uh, no, nobody, and, nobody at that age ever does. I mean, even back in, you know, the early days, the, the World War I, World War II, all the, all the kids that had to go fight, nobody wanted to do that. Nobody ever wanted to hurt another person either. Yeah, yeah. And so they're very much, you know, in some ways pawns in a, in a larger scheme and uh, just pieces in a larger scheme. And, and uh, so our thoughts and prayers go out to them, um, you know, and so, you know, maybe just to, to kind of wrap up, uh, I come to each of you, you know, how would you describe the bond between transport and, um, and veterans? Because in, in my experience, uh, it's even stronger in trucking than it is in other parts of our society. Um, you know, uh, how, how would you describe it? And maybe we'll start with Brent and, and then go to Gord and finish off with motor. I think when it comes to the vets and trucking, if you go by all the long hours that the people in the military do put in and, and are able to do, uh, maybe even Gord's got some good examples, but, you know, uh, working an 18 hour shift was never, ever easy, but you had to do it especially when you're doing consolidation where you're transferring fuel from a ocean going tanker to your AOR and then keep fueling as your another ship as they come in on the other side. I think there's a there's that drive between that and also doing trucking because of the long hours that you put in and being away from home as well, which was never easy to do, but you did it because that so what give you your life and your career and your job, right? Yeah. That's what it required. Yeah. Exactly. Gort, Gort what would you say? Well, I, uh, I totally agree with Brent. The, uh, you know, the long hours uh, <laughs> when I first started, uh, like I mentioned, uh, being a city driver for Canadian Freightways for a while, and then I just had to get the heck out of out of town and go see what uh, the oil oil patch was offering up in the North Country. And ended up being on uh, ice roads and crossing rivers and crossing ponds and whatnot uh, uh, for better part of 26 of my 40 years uh, running my own company and uh, just. You know, yes, there is a fellowship. Uh, it, it's held together by being out there and doing, you know, some wild and crazy things, as I'd mentioned before. But uh, the long hours that Brent was mentioning, yeah, uh, I considered myself a sleep deprivation specialist for a bunch of years, and that came out of the military, where they'd uh, keep us keep us on duty, especially in training. We could go for, uh, you know, uh, several days, but I'm going to say a couple of days with very little or no sleep and being tested on how we handled it. Well, uh, that lasted for quite a few years. Now in my, you know, I'm into my late later 60s and uh, I try not to do a heck of a lot of that uh, as I did in, in my 40s and 50s, uh, I was still doing long hours. You know, we get out into the bush. Well, there's no way scales to worry about out there. You just go and uh, try to stay out of trouble. You know, you're dealing with your truck freezing up, well, uh, or, or uh, sliding into the ditch or pulling somebody else out of the ditch because there's nobody going to be around for a day or two to find them. And, and you know, like up in the <laughs> yard. That's stuff that uh, that we did in the military, you know, Arctic training and whatnot. But uh, when I went to Anubik one year back in, in 1990, I, I believe it was, and uh, it all kicked in what, what they taught us in the military. Uh, 
to look after people. You know, I noticed that a guy had got snowed in on the Northwest Territories Yukon border and his truck was still running, but he was all snowed in in the middle of the road. And here comes another native uh, in a snow machine that had broke down. And he, the two of them were kind of surviving in the middle of the night with no communication because they were at the base of the mountain. Well, stuff like that is what, I guess what we live for in the military to put some spice in our, uh, in our job. And it's, you know, without going on and on about the different adventures, it's more excitement than working around town. I found <laughs> I yeah. just had to get out of, out of town, out of, out of the city to go and see what there was to experience in the mountains and in the North. Love it. What can I uh, I have to interrupt. I, I agree with Gord. There was always that excitement. Um, who was the old fellow there that worked for Jamie Davis Towing? He said, we can go 50 hours with a couple of packs of smokes and lots of coffee and keep going. I don't care. I'll just keep working. <laughs> Trucking. <laughs> yeah. I, I, the one thing that, uh, well, one of the things that struck out what you said, Gord, uh, reminded me of a post that I just saw, and, it, and it's the, um, the kind of the tie of keeping people safe. So there was this post, uh, especially po like after, you know, this incident uh, with uh, the protest in Ottawa and the Tomb of the Unknown Sto Soldier, there was this post of a girl that said, don't cast a broad brush, a broad brush with one example. Um, she said, uh, she talked about being young and being a single mom and having to drive across Canada and and, uh, and you know, just the, the frightening nature of that to her and her dad saying, just stick with the truckers, they'll keep you safe. And uh, yep. she said she did that and uh, she would just hook up and they would, they would make sure she's okay. And uh, they would, would make sure that she's safe and they'd give her advice and, and they'd use their CBs to connect her with someone else along the road if they weren't going that far. And uh, it was a beautiful article that I'll have to find and post uh, because it just talked to that. You know, um, you know, obviously veterans, that's the ultimate in keeping people safe, but the trucking community does that as well. And I, and I, and I think it's still there. The community looks different, um, but I, I think it's like you mentioned them, like Ty and Todd and all these young people, that spirit still is alive and it may take different shapes and forms, um, but I, I just honor it. I, I just think it's so cool. Well, I'm truly impressed with the younger generation coming up. They're definitely going. I mean, they've got a lot of respect for the ones that I've met and, and seen. They've got a lot of respect for the people on the road, be it four-wheelers or whatever. I mean, everybody gets PO'd at the four-wheelers and want to drive over them. Not literally, <laughs> but, you know, they get upset because people can truly be stupid and get in the way and yeah. figure it's our fault when we're out there. Yes. But at the same time, they're very caring, they're very you know watchful for others and and the the brotherhood that they've created like it's it's uh the, the biggest thing like you watch the movie convoy and you hear you know my dad tell his stories in the early days and you know gord and everybody else all the guys that have the stories from maybe not so far before me but <laughs> um so the only motor, the only thing we... the only thing the only thing that has changed over the years is the population and it's the complaints are the same but there it's just more of it because there's so much more traffic out there. They still have drivers that probably shouldn't be driving in the places they are. They still have drivers that aren't trained properly. I mean that's been the ongoing argument for as long as I can remember. Like stories that I've heard and you know you watch the movie Convoy from the 70s they had the same art the same complaints right so yeah. i mean it's just it's the population has changed we have so much population now that it happens more often yeah no definitely definitely yeah, yeah. no this is uh this has been good and, and motor when you were chatting it was about you know to me it came you know the 18 wheelers and and the cars and the four wheelers and just the bad thoughts that happen I, I think yeah. it's it's a true point to a lot of parts of our society. It's usually not because there's there's not bad. It's not that the people are bad. It's because it's a lack of knowledge. And so most it's exactly you know, what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lack of knowledge. Hey, and hey, hey, motor. Here, here's one thing too. You know, and I being a truck driver for a few years, and I 
and I'm not going to say I'm any expert by any means, but that, you know, I, if I had a car, I would think I'd know how to change the tire. And yeah. I, I don't really <laughs> that need to call a lot. I know where this uh, is going. I know where this is going. <laughs> Popo's auto wrecking and towing to come and help out. But anyway, it's charged. It's all true. Whatever Brent's going to say is all true. So go ahead, Brent. Sorry, David. I had to throw that in there after what Motor said and what you were saying. Yeah. A lack of knowledge on how to properly change a tire. And Brent was my savior on his photo shoot for the calendar. I had a flap. And uh, so Brent was my mechanic. And, uh, and, uh, and so I, I appreciate that. A man of many talents. That's funny. Well, <laughs> did, did did he did he at least have a jock? Yeah, he's a jack of all trades. No, <laughs> did you have a jock so he could change his attire? Well, I, thought, I can't remember because I, I did. Said, well, David, we'll we'll just pull in here and we'll fix your tire. Yeah. And he says, "No, you're not going to do that because you're. We got to go do this photo shoot." He says, "I'll just call for help." So that's what he called. Uh, Popo's out of out of uh, up down the street and look home there. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, to come and change his flat tire. Look too funny. <laughs>
I've been hustling for so long Boy, I've been thinking about the past And it keeps me going on Oh, but I can't stop, no, I don't stop It's only I can see Even if I end up all alone I know my destiny My mama told me we all bleed the same sun Oh, prejudice and pride will make you change Just always remember where you come from Cause I know you were born to break the chain So I'm on my way Yes, I'm leaving today Are you right? jack or not david i can't uh, remember yeah uh, i think i yeah i do i did and i do but uh it was something that i've hardly used and and in my family uh well, i mean you guys all know donna she's the fix-it girl in our family and i do the i i'm the cook and the chef and the um all those sorts of things it's not that i couldn't change a tire but it's just not um yeah the mechanical side has never been my strong point because i've never had the experience uh, uh, David, I thought your you lovely did wife was going to give up a whole kidney stone after you told her that story. <laughs> <laughs> David, you did a time appreciation and there wasn't any time to change the darn thing. It was quicker to hire it out, right? Yeah, it's called delegation. And sometimes that's a good skill to have. But then it's also good to hang around Brant and Rose because they're great people with a ton of skills and uh, they come to the rescue. So it's good. I like it. You're thinking there, Brent. Were you about to say something? I can see it in your uh, eyes. Your head's spinning. Oh, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> I, I always think of things, and I know after this, I'll, I'll get off here, and I w I'll say to myself, I wished I would have said this, but... Well, there will be other opportunities. But I, I just want to I just want to thank you, because going back to that knowledge piece, you know, recently that the, the relationship between uh, truckers and, and veterans has had a bad light cast on it. Um, I think unnecessarily, and um, and uh, and so it's just I, I wanted to share this that there is strong ties and to tell that story and and um, you know for people uh, no matter how much they may be tempted not to cast that broad brush um, because I just you know as I honor the trucking community I honor our veterans Brent and Gord thank you for your service uh, to our yes. community in your various roles uh, and I, I it's just uh, it's an important story to tell. 
So thank you, gentlemen, for helping Terry to uh, share it and, and tell it. And thank you for each of who you are. And um, I appreciate each one of you. Yes, same for me, guys. And feel free to enjoy your Saturday. Get out there. It's sunny in Calgary. And uh, so I assume it is in Chestermere or just outside of Chestermere where you are, Gord, and, and, uh, and Motor. It's a beautiful day out there. So get out there and enjoy it. And, and again, uh, appreciate all of you. Thank you, Dave. We appreciate you. Oh, we lost you there, Gord. But it's all good. Enjoy the day with Wendy and Whiskey. And give a hug to Rose, Brent. And, uh, I definitely will. And uh, thanks for everything that you do, David. Motor, all the best to you, buddy. Thank you. Awesome. And Gordon, Grant, look forward thanks for everything to, you've uh, done, buddy. It's all good. All okay, good. All good. Look, look forward to catching up with you there, Brent. Like to meet up with you sometime. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'd love to see. Uh, uh, John and Donna do one last truck show before they call it completely retired. <laughs> I don't think that'll ever happen, but uh, it would be nice. Well, they're yeah, living they're in a little now. They're, they're, living in a little they're living in a little piece of paradise, and John's become a fisherman. And so, yeah, I, I, but we'll put the challenge out there. John and Donna, really, your, your, your fans are asking for one last truck show, one last party. And uh, well, I'll, I'll let you know what he says. <laughs> it would Might be nice to, to be able to get Kamloops. everybody together again. Yeah. I'd go to Kamloops for that. Yeah. Yeah. I would too. Yeah, awesome. Me too. So, John yeah. and Donnie, you've got four people that are coming. <laughs> <laughs> Look, oh, here we come. <laughs> they thought they I'm had sure. paradise, but not anymore. I, I'm sure we could get uh, Jamie Davis and Craig LeBeau out there too. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. that would be. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're close enough. Yeah. I remember uh, when, speaking of John, when they moved out to Lillooet, it wasn't like a week later that, um, what was the town in BC that got destroyed by fire? It's like 15 kilometers that, away. And it was like, well. Was there... Go ahead, Gord. What you town was it? You, you knew that I was there. It was Lytton, and uh, uh, I, uh, with one of the fellows from the Kamloops Airport, their executive flight center, we had a load of uh, Jet A1 uh, ready to go down to the helicopters uh, fighting on that fire at, at Lytton, and they wouldn't let us through on the Spence's Bridge side because it, everything was involved in flames. Long story short, we went down through Lillooet and got stopped about five miles outside or just north of uh, uh, Lytton where the fire was coming up towards Lillooet. And uh, that was four days after John and Donna White moved into their uh, house in Lillooet. So I got to enjoy uh, an evening decompressing. Uh, it was, I don't know, I think it took half a bottle of rum uh, just... <laughs> to get my nerves settled down from seeing those flames coming across the road in front of our uh, uh, tanker truck with all that uh, Jet A1 fuel in it. So yeah, it was it was a good, uh, you know, impromptu visit with the Whites, but uh, like I didn't know that they had just moved there four days and, and they get their first visitor and it just happens to be another crazy trucker. You know how that works? <laughs> When did you first meet John, Gord? Uh, well, we were partners in Pro Trucker Magazine. Yeah. Yeah. And so it goes back 20 some years. Uh, yeah. Okay. At least. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, how I'm long at... have you, has it been through the show's motor or how did you know John? I met John through Gord because it was the first year that Gord and I uh, I went with Gord. We took the smoking gun up to Mission on the High Boy with the 57. That was the first year I, I got the bite from the tr truck show bug going out there with Gord. Yeah. 2001. Was yeah. that? That was 2001. Was it 2001? Okay. Yeah, that's probably right. 
Yeah. And Brent, that's when I met John your, and Donna. Yeah. What's your story with John and Donna? Um. Well, maybe Gord will know best, better than I would, and maybe even Mike. My uncle Eric used to go to a truck show, and I didn't know what it was called until I started driving for Houston Trucking, and it was that magazine that John and Gord, I guess, then. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long they've been around. How long did John run the magazine for? But he would go to that show in Chilliwack, because isn't that where he held it? Well, he held two shows, right? One in BC, Chilliwack. Well, not Chilliwack, it was Mission for Mission. the longest time. And then it moved to Chilliwack um, as John was just trying to find the best site that people liked. Uh, where's, but I remember my uncle Eric said he always dedicated that weekend. He never ever took his truck, but he always went there because there was everyone else he knew was there. Because it was yeah. a big community. That back then was a big community. Yeah. And, uh, the very first truck show, I talked to John a couple of times on the phone before my first truck show. And then uh, I told him about my Uncle Eric. And he says, well, and I showed him a picture of my Uncle Eric and he knew exactly who he was. Yeah. Yeah. They made a new I don't know what my Uncle Eric's company name was, but when he passed away and hung up his keys, but I don't know how many years he drove for Cambridge. I'd have to ask my mother, but but he made that a. I don't know, Gord. Do you remember where they held those? Do you ever remember any of the Ken Brent trucks out there? Yes, absolutely. I remember seeing the Ken Brent trucks, and as far as knowing if you know what shows that they were at, I don't. But. Uh, I, I've been involved in truck shows since uh, 1985 when I bought my first Kenworth. We had the truck shows uh, at uh, Ray City Speedway here in Calgary, and yeah. that was covered. Yeah, that was covered by uh, I forget the absolute. I think it was Wheels, not Wheels in Time, but something like that that we had as a trucking. Uh, uh, newspaper with Randy Peluso and John White was in there. Uh, he was eyeing, uh, taking over the, the Pro Trucker magazine or making it become the Pro Trucker magazine um, and looking for, I don't know, sponsorship and help with it and stuff. And that's where I got involved with it in early 2000s. I'm going to say probably 2002, 2003. Uh, I went in as a, a partner with John White uh, on Pro Trucker Magazine and stayed there until about, uh, oh, probably 07, 08. Mm -hmm. And uh, John was looking to, you know, just take it uh, or, or restrict it to family. In other words, uh, we were family, uh, unrelated family, but... Uh, uh, other than through trucking and it was just an opportunity to do something different for me I always liked the literary side of it wrote a bunch of articles and whatnot but uh, I, uh, I enjoyed the truck show circuit and uh, doing uh, something different with uh, you know putting the shows together or at least helping with them that was always a positive thing yeah. bringing it to Alberta back to Alberta after such a success in mission. Yes. And I'll say yeah, this Ken, about, go ahead, Motor. Ken, yeah, Ken Brent, I remember their traders, they had the red arrows that had the points on both sides. Uh, they, they were at quite a few of those truck shows too. I remember the blue peep they had. Um, yeah. I actually, they had a truck show over at Finning one year and I had my uh, T600 Kenworth at the time from Rosenau and I had the 57 Dodge up on the high boy tied down and I actually beat the Ken Brent for the trophy that year. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I remember the one year too. I don't know. You remember Cliff Steen trucking or C Steen. He worked for my grandfather back in the early days, but he had some uh, really nice iron back in the day. And we had put Wild in uh, three. 
yeah, three of the uh, new anteater teeth. That's right after we got those new uh, T600s. And we went in company class and Cliff Steen went in there with his Peterbilt with the big bunks and everything. And he was kind of upset when uh, Rosenel got the uh, fleet uh, trophy. <laughs> so funny. yeah, that, that was out at the one board, like out at the racetrack board was talking about there. That was a yeah. big show every summer. Yeah, and the racetrack no longer is there. So neither is nope. the show. Went up to Red Deer for a while. things about the truck show in uh, Calgary and the racetrack there. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And I will say this about shows. I mean, yeah, Moda, you joke, and it, the shows are a little bit about showing off, and there are trophies for, you know, best in class across a number of categories. But if you understand truck shows uh, right across the country, whether it's Rodeo or Fergus or, um, you know, Clifford Truck Show in Ontario or uh, the Alberta Big Rig or Lusco Pro Show and Shine or, you know, all of the shows. Now it's the Miracle or uh, ZZ Chrome is doing the show in BC um it's chrome it's, for kids yeah yeah chrome for kids um good stuff you, you, there's a part of it that's showing off but most of it is the art of showing up and just yeah. being part of community fellowship and, yeah yeah and being able I to agree. share and uh there's a lot of younger kids like Rafi up in northern he would show up to the shows and he had an old mac and and uh you know different trucks and they were nothing they weren't going to win any trophies but he wouldn't miss it because it was just a chance to be, you know, part of the community because you're isolated so much of the time, uh, that chance to connect and, and uh, was just so valuable. And, and, you know, so I'm a big proponent of the shows. They're not just about, you know, I mean, if you're a trucker out there and you think the show isn't for you because you're driving something you don't think is worthy, that's not the heart of the shows. Yes, they have the trophies, but showing up is, is the big deal.
Well, and the thing is for me, like you say in Rafi with the Mach or whatever, I mean, when I started driving truck, I was in a Hino. Well, first it was an R model Mach single axle. Yeah. You know, and it was wagon wheels, no bud wheels on this truck. So I had chrome nut covers on the wheel nuts and <laughs> made, we, my uncle Tim and I chromed our tail light. We had the trail mobile tail lights and we put angle iron across the back of our max and i mean we chromed them up but they were just regular day cab single axle arm out max right yeah and even like i was driving a hino tractor back in the day and i i oh. bought this chrome uh, uh it looked like a chrome alcoa bud but it was just a chrome there was a stainless cover and yeah. i actually had to drill out a couple holes to get it to fit over the big bolt pattern of the hino but i mean i i lettered tires and you know, whatever I drove, I, I cleaned up and it, it was my pride and joy, whatever it was. I made sure, you know, it, it looked good. Yeah. So, I, 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 you learn something new every day. I have no idea that you drove a Hino in your lifetime. Yeah. Do you have any pictures? Oh, yeah. uh, somewhere in a photo album in my storage trailer, I'd have to <laughs> dig them out. But yes, I have pictures. That's all. Awesome. I, I I sorry, Gordon. I have to I have to admit to something as well. Uh, <laughs> do you remember the old white compact uh, cab over freight freight box, uh, actually body job that Canadian Freightways had for picking up freight in town? I drove one yeah. of those ugly old gas gas pots uh, for about eight months before. Uh, well, maybe that was my incentive to get get out of town with a gooseneck uh, one ton outfit to get my company started but uh, do you remember those old uh, ugly old white compacts i didn't put any chrome on them i i almost wanted to put a paper bag over my head and uh, cut some my <laughs> okay yeah i do now this has become the confessional brent what do you want to confess um i think those two got a lot more over top of me I know I got a lot of grief because of the company I did drive through for, yeah, you know, as well as I do, David, but they gave me a truck and I treated it like it was my own. Yep. I looked after it and I tried my best to look after it. Yep. Um, there's, like you said, David, the truck shows were, we were scared about going to it the first time Rose and I did it. And after the first night, Friday night, Rose and I came home and I kind of breathed a sigh of relief and she says, well, you gave up a week of your holidays for this. What do you think? And I said, oh, I'm not sure yet. She says, you know what? I think it's going to be a good weekend. We're going to have a lot of fun. I've never laughed, never had so much fun as I did that year. Yeah. And every year after that. And that's what I miss. And yeah. I will always miss that. Yes. Yeah. So the call is out. I'll let you know. Uh, I'll get uh, Mr. White to officially respond. <laughs> It'll be, we go pound sand. Yeah. I'm not leaving my retirement home. <laughs> Maybe for We're the grandkids, but... A 2022 reunion in Kamloops. There we yeah, go. We'll gang up on them. We'll do a conference call and gang up on them. I like that. That's a good idea. Actually, um, let me phone him. Hold on. <laughs> you guys chat. I'm going to phone Mr. White. I'm turning on my phone. And, uh, he won't be on Zoom, but um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll do that. So you guys go ahead and continue to confess. Uh, I shut my phone off so it wouldn't ring, so it's turning on. I'm going to phone Mr. White and see if we can't get him impromptu on the show. Okay. Hmm. I, got, I got one thing I want to say to the motor. Um, when I first started driving with Houston Trucking, I remit remember being in Calgary and I saw a green day cab go by that said Rose no. I went, holy crap, who owns that, drives that? I'd seen it go by Barlow and Pagan off and on. And then as time went on, I saw the Freightliner that you have now with the, the troops. And it wasn't until I was at my very first truck show that you had both those trucks there and somebody said that's who drives those well, why didn't you tell me you saw those i got so much <laughs> crap and i said well who is it he says see that big guy over there and i said huh that guy right there with the ball cap and you're 
I said, who's that? He says, don't you know who Motor oh, is? Oh, John's phoning, gentlemen. <laughs> Sorry? John's phoning. Mr. White. You rang. I did. You're on the WOW show, whether you know it or not. Uh, You're in trouble. Because we're, we're in the middle of a taping, and I've got on the uh, screen, I've got Mr. Uh, Motor. Uh, I've got Mr. Brent uh, McClellan, and I've got Mr. Gord Cooper. And uh, we were just talking about you. Well, those three bandits are all on there? Yeah. Yep. You oh. should hear what we've been saying about you. <laughs> <laughs> you will hear on the next show. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so hey, we, we need to ask you just officially, because uh, there's... There's there's a real kind of um, there's a there's a piece missing in our souls and that's one last you know truck show reunion and we're talking about uh, that you would organize something in Kamloops as a last gas reunion uh, for 2022. Um, are you up for that? In Kamloops. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a plan. There we go. <laughs> And, and my wife in the background says, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but David, did Give you tell a... we were holding it by his homestead? Yeah, or we could just hold it in Lillooet. It could be a Lillooetian festival 2022. Holy. It'd be a little bit, little bit tight to do, but tight for I space. <laughs> the town wouldn't know what hit it. <laughs> we would quadruple the population automatically they run out of groceries david gord was yeah. telling us that uh within four days of you moving there he paid you a visit with a very extremely flammable load yes he did yeah he uh, i guess he didn't figure there was enough fire out here at the time <laughs> <laughs> i would like to contribute you know that i like putting more flame in the fire <laughs> what I what I heard from him, he he almost did add to the fire if he hadn't got turned around on that highway on his way to Lytton. Yes, yeah, we need Gord around no for a sense. while. So I'm glad he turned around. <laughs> no sense in burn burning out the highway. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, so uh, that's good. So we'll we'll wait to hear from you to see what's happening uh, in 2022 in terms of uh a last gasp reunion um, show for people that uh, got together in Alberta and BC over the years. Uh, and, uh, and we'll wait for that. But we've been talking about veterans uh, and just the connection between trucking and, and the veteran society and, um, you know, just kind of getting their stories. As you know, Brent and Gord are veterans themselves and Motors yes. got the support your troop trucks. Um, you know, you've run Pro Trucker Magazine. You've been part of the community. We'll get your thoughts. Um, because, you know, I, I, you know, a big part of the reason for the show was that, you know, with everything that's happened in the last little while, there's been some negative associations uh, that have been drawn and I don't think are true. And uh, so we've had a great hour just chatting and, and talking about how the, the communities are knit and, and uh, how truckers are, are really strong at, at honoring uh, the veterans in our country. Um, what's your experience in that arena? Well, I've... Uh... I think the veterans have, have, are are very valuable to the to the companies. Um, the, the biggest reason for that, uh, and I'm sure the boys will back me up on that, is uh, they set out to do a job and they and they get it done. You yeah. know, come hell or high water, and uh, it's uh, it's a, a it's a, a, a trait that's uh, instilled in them in the military, of course. And uh, I, I think uh, I don't I don't know any any trucking company that wouldn't like a veteran. Uh, driver out there just for the fact they know they could depend on them yeah yeah and you know what that's not just true in trucking as i worked in shell for 15 years the vets that we hired were indispensable their discipline to get a job done was incredible and we yeah. all we all learned from that you couldn't help but have it rub off on you um and uh and there, there was one rob um i just remember the first time i shook his hand it was like you know there's there's a handshake and then there's a there's a military handshake. <laughs> and he could see, your teeth. Yeah, he, he could see the grimace <laughs> on my face and and uh, and he just started to laugh and he said, sorry, Dave. He says, I'll lighten up next time. <laughs> no, they uh, they uh, it's sincere, let's put it that way. Yes. Yeah, no, it's awesome. So what are things like out in Lillooet these days? 
It is a beautiful sunny day. It's about 12 above, uh, or, well, right now it's probably around about 10, but it'll be about 12 above in, in, in no time. Uh, beautiful sunny day. Uh, my, my semi-retirement has me out feeding cattle in the morning with a good friend of mine up at his ranch, and I just got back. <laughs> I pretty well do that every morning. <laughs> little bit of ice fishing and stuff like that. I've, I've got about 18 pounds of trout that's in a brine right now that I'm going to smoke. Uh, probably put it on the smoker later today or, or tomorrow. And life is pretty relaxed. Uh, the uh, uh, rush hour in, uh, in Lillooet, uh, con, you know, consists of about 25 cars. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> that's five <laughs> minutes of it. Yeah. What were you saying, motor? All five minutes of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, save some of that trout and save some of that beef for the uh, truck show, the reunion tour. Well, that's something to think about. Um, let's let's get back together on that and, and see what we can come up with. Uh, Kamloops is a great central spot. Uh, it pulls in all the all the guys from from north up up farther north and and the guys up from the coast to the guys from Alberta. It's not that far away for anybody if, if it was going to be a, a, you know, a real reunion type of thing. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. I wonder, I wonder if you'd want to get involved with the heavy equipment show that they have out there, John, like mix in with them, or would you rather just do just the pro trucker thing? Well, do they have a, do they have, I know they have one in Prince George, and I know they have one down at the coast in Maple Ridge. Um, do they have one in Kamloops? I'm pretty sure it was. I I would talk to Craig about it because I keep bugging him to tell me when it is so I could sneak out there. But yeah, Craig Le, Craig I'll, LeBeau, he's in there. So I'll, I'll get hold of Craig. I mean, if anybody would know, it's it, it's definitely him. And if we yeah. went to Kamloops, he'd he'd be half the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And just to <laughs> ease Donna's uh, blood pressure right now. Um, you can tell her that this does not involve registration and uh, anything like that. This is a pure social get together. And that would be great. That would be that would be <laughs> so nice uh, to do it that way. Can I we? Would, uh, I would definitely uh, definitely enjoy that. I just want to pay tribute to your wife, Donna White, who was the backbone behind many of those shows. As she spent hours yeah. in that trailer, shuffling paper, um, trying to keep people happy um arranging everything that was going on she was yeah. uh she was incredible she worked non-stop from uh friday night or friday or well friday the thursday actually thursday when we start setting up she worked non-stop all the way through my job consisted of you know laying things out parking some trucks and, and stuff like that and uh by by noon on Saturday, my job was done, but hers never quit till we shut it down on Sunday. So, yeah, it, uh, yeah, she definitely was the backbone of the show. She she held it all together. The and the volunteers, uh, we had just terrific volunteers that came out all the time, and yeah, and there was always people asking us, you know, can we? What can we do? What can we do? And and that's trucking. To be honest, the 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 volunteers that we had had, had so much under control that I would be at a loss for words. You know, like, well, nothing. <laughs> Just yeah. relax. Have, you know, talk to your friends. It's uh, yeah. they always were family reunions, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, they, yeah. You know, a lot of people never got to see each other for for a year at a time, and then old old friendships were uh, brought out again, and and the guys just had a really good time. The gals and, and the guys and the gals. So, it, uh, yeah, uh, uh, a reunion would be really cool. And you know uh, what? Yeah, let's we're gonna plan on it. So stay tuned, everybody. And uh, and sorry, I can't resist given all the political theater on lately. I think we should call it a fringe festival. <laughs> hey, right on! I love it. With 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 unimportant views. Let's not get into that. <laughs> you don't want your bank account. I am, and a conservative I'll always be, but let's not get into it. You don't want your bank account frozen, John. <laughs> You don't want your bank account frozen? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, yeah, but it wasn't the government that did that. It was the GoFundMe <laughs> that, that froze the bank accounts. Uh, oh. that, was, that was just a, 
Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we'll 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 end it there. I'll take my foot out of my mouth and I'll put it back on my leg. And, yeah, and, uh, like I say, I I I am no, no fan of the the Trudeau government by by any means. But at the, at the same time, uh, some of the stuff gets blamed on them that wasn't wasn't them, right? Yeah. Uh, a lot of stuff they did, but the the freezing of the money and that that was a GoFundMe that that froze the money. So. But what the heck, 90% of the, or not 90%, probably 50% of the money that was in that came out of the U.S. anyway. So, <laughs> anyway, we, we will talk politics a different time. Yeah, <laughs> and that could be a 10-hour show. I can see Gordy there shaking his head. Actually, Gordy's left. We lost him. He got, uh, he ran. It must oh. have been what I said. <laughs> well, you guys take care, and it's... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll, we'll move forward from here. <laughs> Sounds good, John. Thanks for being a good sport, and uh, it's always good chatting with you. Yeah, and you take care, Motor. We will hopefully see you real soon, you guys. Okay. Yeah, you bet. We'll okay. talk to you guys soon. Good talking to everybody. Yeah, good talking good to everybody. I want to thank all three gentlemen uh, for being part of that panel discussion. Motor, thank you. Brent, and Thank you, and Gord, thank you, and then a special thank you to John White, and uh, just uh, an appreciation for the ability to be a good sport. It really was impromptu that we called John up. For those of you that don't know, and there wouldn't be many of you, but for those of you that don't know John White, he has been editor of Pro Trucker Magazine, which is now Pro Trucker Driver's Choice, as John has ended, uh, not ended, he's in semi-retirement out in Lillooet. He still writes the editorial for that magazine every single month, and John is an awesome dude, uh, has had the heart of truckers uh, in his mind and uh, and has supported them throughout the years with the magazine and the stories they tell uh, and definitely has an opinion. And so we're going to have John hopefully more on the show uh, and we'll have some fun with that. Uh, and I appreciate that man and his family, Donna, who makes all of the shows that they had work uh, and uh, as well as uh, Ben and Tori, who were an integral part of it as well. In terms of thankfulness, I also want to thank all the sponsors that make this show possible. Uh, whether it's NEL Insurance, who has been a huge supporter of the all things WOW, whether it be the Watchrix calendar, they customize it for their uh, clients every single year. Uh, and now the WOW show, uh, Glenn Caldwell and Aaron Lindsay at NEL have a huge heart for the people in the industry. Yes, business is business, but then people are people. And that's where their heart is. And I appreciate them. They're difference makers. And it's fun to be partnered with people who have the same heart that I do uh, for the trucking community. Uh, Lesco Distributors, man, tons of heart as well. That kind of is the common thread between all the people that are involved in the show. And so, you know, we have Leslie and Daryl and Tina up at Lesco and, and the gang up at Lesco in Edmonton your trucker's candy store, chrome and accessories. And their heart shines through every year just in terms of how they interact with their, their friends, which are their customers on a daily basis, but also through things like the Toy Run and the Pro Show and Shine. And they give back to the community that makes their lives possible. And I appreciate their support and being part of the show. Uh, Bar J Heavy Mechanical in Balzac, Alberta, an awesome family-owned, ethical, integral shop uh, that you can trust just off of highway two north of calgary in the balzac exit and uh, not too far off of that uh, you'll find bar j heavy mechanical so thank you dave and michelle for your support uh, and then day and ross transportation crystal thank you for your support a, an organization that's been around for a long time if you're looking for a job in transport it's a great company to, to be a part of because it offers you so many opportunities whether it be a driver or whether it be moving into an office or management or various parts of what it takes to run a trucking company. The beautiful thing about a company like Day and Ross is that um, they're big enough to give you, even within that one company, a whole range of opportunities as your life, uh, you know, circumstances change or your desires change, they can change with you. Dayross.ca, I'd encourage you to check them out. Hope the sun is shining on the hood of your truck today. Hope it's shining on your soul. I want to end off with a couple things. Uh, this thought, number one, uh, for my dad, as we talked about where today's show was about veterans and wars. Uh, my dad was part of a division that was captured in World War II, and he met his enemy. Uh, and I always appreciated his 
viewpoint on it. Whenever he would tell me the stories, he would frequently say, Dave, I didn't hate them. He said, I, I knew it was war. And I knew that if the circumstances were different, I could actually be friends with some of them. We could be good friends. And I just appreciated that perspective of his and that ability to stand back and separate people from the circumstance that they're in. So as we pray today for what's going on in Ukraine, we of course pray for the families and the, uh, and the men fighting for the independence of Ukraine. But I also have a part of my heart that prays for the 18 to 20 year olds that have been conscripted to the Russian army and really don't wanna be there, but are simply pawns in a power game played by uh, those above them. And uh, that there would be a speedy resolution. When you hear stories about war, you realize it's not where you want to be. And so uh, it is time for our prayers and time to, uh, to pay attention to what's going on uh, and that there would be a resolution to it. I want to end off the show with uh, a segment from one of our sponsors, Let's Go Distributors, Daryl. And we'll end off on a lighter note as Daryl kind of takes you through and walks you through some of the cool things that you can put on your truck and what's cool and new and will save you money which is a great combination. Cool and saving money don't always go together. But in today's episode, Daryl is going to show you how that happens. Uh, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So as we lead into it, driver, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. God bless you. David out. All right, Daryl, you and I both know that truckers love cool stuff for their trucks. Uh, so show us some of your favorites, uh, some things that drivers are loving these days and what they can do with it. Go for it. Well, I think one of the things, um, Dave, is um, being a technician and for 28 years and oh, probably 15 of those doing alignments. Um, I wish there would have been a product like this out there when I was doing them. This is called True Balance. And what it is, is it's a, it's a bushing that you put onto the front studs and it centers your brake drum and your wheel dead center to the center line of the spindle so you don't have an out of balance condition. Um, I sit back and think of the amount of times I balanced a wheel and put a lot of weight on because the brake drum wasn't centered to it. So this is one product that I strongly believe in. Thought you had 